Hi, my name is Avina Tayson and here I am talking to you guys about innovation and entrepreneurship. Now I know this isn't the most ideal way. I am giving a TEDx talk from the living room of my house and here I am in a makeshift stage with a small origami TEDx logo which I made <laughs> to make it look realistic. Yes, it's been a tough year. We've been inside for a long time. As a college student myself, I have seen everyone struggle, you know. I totally understand. I had to do college online. Wasn't fun. <laughs> but these are hard times and I guess this is the way it's going to be. And going forward, we need to be able to keep this in mind. We youngsters are always looking for opportunities to explore and to create. And now especially more than ever. We're all just reduced to black boxes on our Zoom screens. Now is the time when everyone wants to stand out, you know, be known for something, be someone who's unique. Now, innovation. Real innovation comes from trying to go the extra step to create your extraordinary product. Innovation is when you have something in mind and you want to go the extra step to achieve that goal. When you bring your ideas to life. In 2017, there was something called Slime, which was trending all over Instagram and YouTube. And no, it wasn't this the gooey substance or the barrel of slimes you get in the stores. They were proper, scented, stretchy, fluffy things, which people would like play with and poke and stretch. And it wasn't available in India. And I was looking everywhere, I was scouring the the entire west to find where these slimes were available but unfortunately it was only available abroad and they were pretty expensive so then i decided i'm gonna make my own slime and i'm gonna you know get this texture right and see what it actually is all about <laughs> well it was not as easy as it sounds because the whole process was so so difficult i remember going to my mom and dad and saying uh, can I please buy some glue and some lotion I would like to make my own slime and they were really confused but they were like okay go for it something silly go for it and I bought all the oils and lotions and I would try them out and nothing worked nothing came even close to the slime texture consistency it would either become really really hard or it would end up in a giant watery mess and it would be smelly and I would waste so much time trying to get the recipe correct and I would do this over and over again with different types of brands and different types of lotions and nothing worked and then one time I bought two three lotions and I was like this time it's going to work so I went inside the room I put them all in a bowl I got my stirring spoon and I put the activator which is the activator to make slime and I mix it up and it was actually forming. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm so close, I'm getting it. And two minutes later, <laughs> nothing worked. It actually kind of uh, overfilled the container and went everywhere. There was glue all over the house. And I started crying and crying and crying. And there was glue on my body, on the floor. And it was such a mess. And my sister comes running in because I was crying. And she's like, what, are you, what happened? Why are you crying? I didn't make slime, I didn't make slime, it's not working, what am I going to do, I wasted so much money and she's like, why are you so upset, it's so silly, don't cry about this. And then I realized something, every time I failed, I was actually narrowing the recipe down, you know, from that moment my attitude changed. Instead of being upset about the failure, why don't I take the idea that this doesn't work and not buy those products anymore find another way to make slime. Once I got that outlook, everything became a lot more positive. I bought more products. Yes, it did take more investment. Soon enough, after three months, I actually got the perfect slime recipe using Indian products. Now, you may be wondering, the reason why it took so long to make this slime was because it was not easy to make slime with Indian products. I had to source raw materials from local markets and to get the perfect consistency and texture all the while making it non-toxic was a challenging task. But thankfully I had formulated it and once I started playing with it I was ecstatic. I showed some of my friends and they were like whoa, Avi this is amazing. 
it's revolutionary. I mean, I don't find this anywhere. Why can't you start selling it? And I thought to myself, well, yes, that's a good idea. No one is doing it in India and no one is selling this. So why don't I start my own business? And <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, oh, whole slime business. I could, you know, I, I was just out of school. I could do the side business before going to college. Then I remember that one time I was conceiving the brand name and I was thinking of really funky names like Avi Slime Factory or Avi Slime Innovative Center. <laughs> and my father walked by and asked me, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm thinking of a company name. And he's like, well, think about it. You want to make the slime accessible to everyone in India. So why don't you name it something where it encompasses the whole universe, you know, call it the slime space. And I loved it. I was like, whoa, Slime Space. That's amazing. The brand was named The Slime Space. And soon I started an Instagram channel called the.slime.space where I sell slime all over India. And soon enough, I was getting orders from people in Chennai. And while it was just a small homemade slime business initially, I had to take my sister with me and I was like, can you come help me deliver slimes to doorsteps of people's houses? And she's like, yeah, come, come. So <laughs> we would go one by one. And after I went on Instagram, I blew up, you know, everyone came to me saying, I must get your hands, my hands on this product. It's amazing. Where can I find this? And soon enough, I started online orders for everyone in India so that if you were in Bombay or Delhi or Jammu and Kashmir, you would still be able to get my slimes. Uh, this is what slime is. It's, this is what I've been talking about. Well, it's great satisfaction to the customer. You can take the slime and open it and <laughs> create air bubbles which gives bubble pops and it's so satisfying it's a great way to relieve stress now this slime went from a simple basic glue slime to something which had color has scent and has different textures now you might be wondering how i did it well truth be told i had a great support system my family helped me in almost everything and they continue to do so. When I had just left school, like I mentioned, and I was joining college, uh, I was going to do my bachelor's in computer science. I am still doing my bachelor's in computer science, um, all online. <laughs> As I got bigger, I was not able to do this myself. I had to ask my family to help me. I didn't have employees. So I asked them all to come help me. And yes, my mom helped me with the slime making. My sister would help me with the accounts and my father would help me with the shipping. I have my sister making labels and designing all the cute, cute things of the company. I will, as you can see, a label here, the, our logo, which is called the Slime Space logo. And looking at what's available in the market, we have also had various product extensions. These slimes are not just one texture. There are five different textures and every month we come up with new colors, new scents, new charms, new products, they're all different. So it's never the same. I'm not selling the same thing constantly. I'm always trying to create new things. In fact, very recently, we're also going into merchandising. Now, how all of this is possible? Well, I do many things, you know, I am someone who wants to do everything out there anything i see i just want to get my hands in it and just start doing it i am part of my college's theater club and i have performed in many plays i am doing my slime business i manage my computer science degree on the side as well as my origami which i will be getting to soon now all these things is hard to balance out i also waste a lot of time i procrastinate i binge watch netflix shows but it really comes down to your ability to prioritize. You know, it gives you joy. If something is giving you happiness and you know that you're good at it, then it's not going to stop you. It shouldn't hold you back. You should be able to do it without any restraints. Now, the key ingredient in keeping a business alive is all about sustainability. More than success, it's about the way you can sustain your business. My business now is three years old and 
we still get so many orders a month we still have people coming over to our page people are still so new to the concept of slime so just the fact that i can educate people and help them and once they understand and they purchase it they're so happy social media is a great way to get yourself to a higher platform in fact the other day we had posted a video of how slime is not just for kids because it has a great therapeutic value it helps students and adults under when they're going through stressful tasks we can hold our slimes and just get all that stress out with this and the great part is they're all scented amazing therapeutic scents to help you relax and in that sense when i posted that video it hit 1 million views now when i was in school i had a very tough time i was not very popular and well a lot of people bullied me for being different and not really fitting in with the convention at that time and that kind of ostracized me from a lot of things in school since i was someone who was so talkative full of energy always trying to be expressive it didn't bode well with too many people and i found myself lonely most of the times now i have two older sisters and they've always been with me they're my stepping stones and they would inspire me so much when i was in 9th standard around the same time this was happening in school my sister was in nift and she was doing her first year college there she would bring home all her assignments you know whether it was tie and dye or uh, knitting or um, making plaster of paris models i would be so intrigued as to what she was doing i would run over and see all the assignments she was making and i wanted to do the same thing with her and she would let me sit down and watch her and i was quite good at some of them but one time she brought home origami and i would watch her fold paper and i was you know surprised i was like how are you doing that how are you folding paper into models on animals because normally all i had seen was four cups i really didn't think of origami as a complex art and then i decided to go on youtube and started to learn myself and that stuck i was sitting and with youtube on one side i was folding paper non stop i was lonely but i channeled all that frustration into learning a new craft i propelled myself into more complex models like the origami hedgehog and insects from youtube tutorials by 11th standard i had folded something called the origami cube ring which is a 12 unit interlocking cube ring with no glue or cuts i posted this on instagram and i won an art competition on it and i got widespread recognition for my origami work and because of this i was actually invited by my principal to teach the social work for origami to my juniors in, in school i took this interest of mine and i got a lot better and i would just keep folding my models some were 300 steps long like the origami black kissed an owl by katsu kohei this took around 500 steps to make so these things i had folded with lots of patience and a lot of happiness i took this interest and developed this further into more of an entrepreneurship and innovative style where now i give origami workshops to architectural students and businesses when i was 16 i was invited by velo institute of technology a engineering school in velor to teach the architectural first year students origami and i conducted a whole workshop for them and they called me back the next year and the next to next year to teach another origami workshop but this time i used the computer science skills i had learned in my own college and made my talk a lot more technical because origami can is not just a simple child's play it goes much beyond that you can use origami in maths technology science and anything possible the folding techniques every single thing is important i teach uh, workshops to um, businesses and non profit organizations teaching them how to fold small and cute models and get paid for the same so in the 2020 lockdown i had a lot of time to myself and i finally fulfilled one of my long term desires to make a small miniature kitchen from only paper and i did <laughs> Here I have something which I made completely by myself. Um, it is paper, and it has been built to scale. 
as you can see here, we have a, a cute house here. Um, I made the cabinets, there's a small paper cups, a tissue box which is actually um, functional. <laughs> and here we have the basin. Over here I made small tap water which makes it look like it's running water. We have a stove, the oven, a fridge, a table, a little water cooler. <laughs> and this is the uh, cutting bench and this is the wash basin with a little lamp here and the window is open as well to the outside it's something which i kept myself busy with and i really really enjoyed making this now anyone can be an entrepreneur really anyone but a true entrepreneur comes down to your product and your base if you're passionate about your product if you can bring something unique to your product then you're good to go. Being an entrepreneur teaches you so many things, how to satisfy your customers and also a learning experience. You can always learn, understand what your customer wants, their needs. Being an entrepreneur is not easy. You need to understand that sometimes you might be facing a loss. How do you recuperate from that? How do you bring your products into an environment where people will enjoy it. So in that sense, keep your options open, keep your areas open and find new ways to create.